Hello, my name is Tom Murphy um, and in this quick talk I want to discuss our sometimes questionable relationship with failure. It's a relationship that's not uniquely Irish but it's certainly embedded in the Irish psyche at some level. Um, this may resonate with some of you or you might find it obvious but either way I hope to prompt you to re-examine your own approach to making. And if not, there's some pretty pictures of my wood turnings along the way. So when I went to school, this was our relationship with failure. Uh, this is a pass-fail dichotomy. And as many of you are aware, making it very much falls under the auspices of try. Failure, as Adam Savage would say, is always an option. Um, there aren't many of you that will remember this personally, but uh, when I went to school, if you failed, you got hit with a stick. Uh, you learned pretty quickly that not failing was more important than succeeding well. Uh, the effort was put into definitely not failing as opposed to trying to succeed beyond the expectation. So this is a better uh, diagram of the relationship we should have with failure. You try something, maybe you fail, maybe you go back to trying something else, maybe you fail again. You keep try, fail, try, fail until you go try success. Um, but I'm a mathematician, so this is far too simplistic a diagram. This is much more like it. Uh, for n larger than zero or equal to zero, uh, there's a number of failures before you eventually get to success. This is really the maker's approach to things. And I wanted to talk about four different lessons that come out of uh, this sort of idea of, of failure, this sort of, of relationship with failure. So the first is that failure, um, success can lead to failure. So I'm turning now four years. I started in uh, 2016 and uh, in my first year, <coughs> As a first year Turner, I uh, won my local chapter's uh, Turner of the Year award, an award that takes uh, 10 months to compete for. Um, and it had never been won before by a, by a, a, a novice Turner, a first year Turner. Um, I went on to compete nationally, which is pretty much unheard of for a first year Turner. And uh, that year won the novice Turner of the Year nationally. Um, now, wood turners don't do anything quickly. So when you start to compete nationally, you are a novice for three years, even just from when you start uh, national competitions. So for a first year wood turner to come and win it was, again, exceptional. And it was because I was turning stuff that maybe other people weren't. Uh, something I had tried to bring to my work was uh, both a, an engineering but also a, an artistic flair and I'd done very well I was I was fated and uh, lots of people talking about my, my upcoming work um, and the work I would do in the future the problem with that was I now had something to lose I had this expectation that I would produce great work and Consequently, my road to success was not becoming a better craftsman. It was winning more often. As a result, I started to make things that were safe, that were competent, certainly technically well made, but not my usual crazy outlandish uh, imaginative stuff. I My work became boring and safe and I won nothing in my second year. So I turned success into failure because I was too afraid to try. So lesson two would be that failure can be success. Sometimes failure is the mother of invention. I remember making a f two friends of mine uh, cups which I wanted to resemble coming out of, of a, 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 a a piece of bark. Um, I tried my damnedest to f form these goblets and they just 
didn't look right. They always looked nothing like what I wanted them to be. And so in anger <laughs> and to destroy them, I uh, took a circular saw to them and just hacked at them in, in annoyance with myself and discovered that oh, actually that looks exactly like the effect I was looking for. Large gouges through the wood and when sanded looked just like what I was I was trying for. So it can happen that failure will bring you to, to somewhere that, that you that you never thought you would you would you would get to. To give you another example of this, this piece here, uh, my instructor turned and it he wasn't happy with the form. It's got some technical flaws in it. It wouldn't be a competition piece. And so he was about to throw it away. And I said, give it to me. I, I, I want it. It's exactly what I'm looking for to try some, some painting that I've been thinking about doing. And I gave myself the permission to go into my craftsman's workshop and just fail. Just go in there and I was going to do nothing that day. I was just going to try stuff out. And unfortunately, this worked out perfectly the first time, which very rarely happens. And I was really happy with it, but it's painted onto a piece that is not particularly well made. Uh, it couldn't be a, a competition piece, but, but I love it. And this is a, a, a time when if you give yourself the right and the permission to go in to wherever it is you work and fail, that freedom can often bring you to a place that you would you wouldn't otherwise get to. Um, lesson three is that creation or making is a goal. That's your goal. Uh, success is a process, and a f and failure is a step in that process. Sometimes failure can be the the the, the step that you need to take along that way to bring you to somewhere that's better than where you intended to go. So. You can see now that in, in my work, I started to include this uh, stenciling um, approach that I, that I developed on the uh, previous piece. Um, just to point out that wood in the center, the red wood, is actually its color. It, that's not inked or colored. Wood comes in a variety of wild colors. Um, it's just that in Ireland, they're mostly brown. <clears throat> so. I started to use it on this sort of um, uh, lid for a uh, pot, uh, so it should look like this when it's finished. And unfortunately, discovered when I was doing this that the ink or the the paint I was using, the 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 lacquered paint, does not react well with the super glue um, finish that I that I often use. Uh, so. There's a situation where failure is uh, painful, but you learn something for it. So probably about four or five hours of work down the tubes because of a chemical reaction I didn't know about. Um, Adam Savage also says the difference between making and just goofing about is taking notes. And that's important. Um, when you go in and you try something and it doesn't work, it's as important to write that down as it is to write down the successes. You can believe me when I tell you that um, I will never use uh, super glue again on a, on a lacquered finish. <laughs> and so let me talk you through one of the processes of one of the pieces I made for the, for the finals. Um, this is a piece of driftwood that a friend brought me, and it was so uh, rotted um, that I could claw my hand through the right-hand side, as you can see there, to form a, a channel. I generally work with found wood. I don't like to work with wood that's been uh, harvested uh, specifically for the task. There's plenty of wood going around that you can use. Um, but in this case, I've, I, I've, I've worked with a piece of, of flotsam and uh, colored it red, inked it red, just, on, uh, just to get it started. So then I put it in a, a mold and I poured on top of it uh, red and yellow and orange um, resin. My thought here was that this piece of wood was really only fit for the fire, I thought initially. 
And then I thought, well, what if I make it look like it's on fire? And that's where this idea came from. So I started to work on this. So now I have a block of solid block of wood called a blank. You mount that on the wood turner's lathe and spin it and turn it into a cylinder and turn my workshop into a gay wedding. Uh, then I take that cylinder and I put it in submersed into uh, a different kind of resin and, and ink and submit it to uh, half a, an atmosphere. So that's halfway to space. Um, so I, I, I bring it down to one half atmosphere. Um, now, admittedly, it's, it's the easy half of getting to space, but uh, you leave it there then for several days uh, so that the uh, resin and the color is forced into the wood. When it comes out again, turn it again, shape it, and you can begin to see the, 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 the fire coming out of the wood on the left-hand side. And then turn a very large cylinder into a very small cylinder to get the stem, and then turn a very thin bowl out of a very small piece of wood, and then cut that into, into shards. The shards are then glued together into the form of, of the uh, uh, flower, and the entire thing is polished. So the, uh, the um, vase is, is polished up to a very high uh, reflectivity. Now, the point I'm making here about, about this is I didn't wake up one day, walk into my workshop and just start pouring chemicals into containers and pressure flasks and vacuums and uh, molds, etc. If you think that I did this on, in one day without fail, you're mad. This was the consequence of many frustrating hours of pulling my hair out and trying something and putting stuff into vacuums and putting them into pressure pots and turning them and sanding them and finding out that they chemically react with each other and that that didn't work and this didn't work um, and we have a tendency in making to show only the success at the end and hide the failures along the way like there's something to be ashamed of um, my contention is that there is no success without failure along the way, that nothing that's worth trying to do comes without the, the, the chance of failure, and that sometimes failure, that brings you to the most interesting places. By definition, <coughs> nobody wants to fail. <coughs> so by definition, failure brings you to somewhere you would never willingly go on your own, and maybe you find something there that moves your art forward. Thanks for listening.